So I wanted to record this real quickly. This is something that seventh period asked me um, some really good questions about the essay. And so um, I kind of, and I've, I've left this up on the board, but it's kind of a hot mess all over the board. So maybe this is a little bit neater. Um, I will share this with seventh and eighth period in case, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in case they need a little help too. Um, and basically what I did was I, I broke down uh, the, the structure that is inherent in the prompt. So the prompt talks about the hopes and the fears of the Federalists, the Democrat Republicans, and which one is the most influential. So if you're looking at how is that supposed to look in the essay, um, there's really two main ways. I mean, you might come up with a third one. I don't, I don't see a third one, um, but this one might help you. Um, and it is basically that the Federalists you can look at their, their hopes and their fears in kind of an expository. You can do Democrat Republicans and look at their hopes and fears as a repository. And then you can analyze their influence and analyze which one's the most influential in kind of a comparison contrast paragraph, right? Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is going to be um, by looking at just the hopes, first of the Federalists, then of the Democrat Republicans. You can look at uh, the the fears of the Federalists and the Democrat Republicans. So you can kind of do a comparison contrast within each of those paragraphs. And then finally, you can look at which one is the most influential. Uh, the hopes or the fears. Is it the hope of the Democrat Republicans? Is it the fears? Like kind of break it down in that way. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. Um, the, the second one right here is a little more complicated. So that's going to be more of your and I kind of did this, this diagram, if you remember from biology, right? So if you were to have, you know, hopes and fears, Democrat, Republicans, and Federalists, um, that's how the second essay would kind of break down, where you would have an XX, XY, um, you know, and look, have it look that way. And that's how you would kind of analyze, um, analyze the different components and kind of put them together. And it's a little more complex. Uh, the first one is a little more, it, it's simpler, it's not better, it's not worse. Um, that really just kind of looks at the Federalists as a whole, the Democrat as a, as a whole, and then you pick one or the other. Um, so it's whichever you feel most comfortable with. Um, like I said, I left the notes up on the board, like said, kind of a hot mess, but um, I also kind of broke down, um, if you're talking about the Federalists, um, kind of what, are, what it is that they're wanting, things like a strong economy, strong government, stability, um, they're terrified of too much freedom. They have the French Revolution being kind of the context, and they're looking by 1798 at the French Revolution as being this, this terrible example of what happens. Remember, they've seen the Whiskey Rebellion. They've seen Shays' Rebellion. Um, so they're very concerned. They're also concerned about chaos, about these mobs, these groups taking their property. It isn't the essential role of government to protect property, right? Isn't that what we fought for in the Revolution? Um, they're, they're worried about foreign control, so we need a strong national economy. Um, and they want this through the Bank of the U.S., the markets, the tariffs, the factories. Um, you're going to see Hamilton, uh, the Hamilton document, the Marshall document, even the document about George Washington that kind of elevates Washington as this Federalist. These are all ways in which you see asserting kind of this, this unified national idea. Um, and, of course, the Alien and Sedition Act, the French Revolution, these are the context. Uh, remember, the Alien and Sedition Act is a direct result of instability in France and the concerns about that happening here. So that's kind of the Federalist perspective. Democrat Republicans, their biggest hopes are going to be independence and liberty. Um, they want that opportunity that independence and liberty provide. Uh, their biggest fears are a corrupt government that tries to oppress them and takes away their freedom. Um, they want farmers, Western expansion, low tariffs. Your big uh, documents are going to be by Jefferson, by that Manning farmer, the Manning guy. Um, and if you look at the Kentucky Resolution, part of the Kentucky Resolution works with that 1790 naturalization. The 1790 naturalization law puts forth this idea that it's relatively easy to become, uh, a, to become a citizen, right? If you're talking about Hamilton's vision, uh, immigration matters for the markets, if you're talking about other Federalists, though, too many immigrants might get scary, right? Because that could lead to more mobs and that sort of thing. Um, and so the, the naturalization, this is why you have that reaction to the alien, with the Alien and Sedition Acts. 
And then, of course, Jefferson and, and uh, Madison will then respond with the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions. And you can really read as you look through that kind of the challenge to uh, the federal government uh, with the Kentucky resolutions and kind of this proposal of freedom and liberty and all that kind of stuff. So these are kind of the essential hopes and fears kind of within the context of the documents. Don't forget that you need um, three textual references. Those can be direct quotes or they can just be in this document such and such and kind of summarize it. Um, you also want to connect it with the historical context that we've talked about in class. Things like the Panic of 1819, things like the Lowell factory system, um, things like the Com Missouri Compromise, um, you know, things like uh, kind of the overall re national market, kind of the sectionalism, all those kinds of comments that were part of the lecture-based uh, part of class, kind of connect those in as well. So hopefully this kind of helped you make some sense out of it. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, fifth period, if you're kind of confused about it or something like that, you might talk to somebody in seventh or eighth period because we talked about it as a class. Um, and seventh and eighth period, if you're confused, seek out one of your peers, ask them for help. Um, again, uh, try to have this done by Monday. I'm hoping to start grading them Monday during my conference period. Um, I'm sorry, I won't be here Monday during my conference period, so you probably have till later in the day Monday. Um, the flip grid, you want to get it done soon. Um, that will be, I will grade that after I grade the essay, so you probably have a little flex time on that as well. Um, so hopefully that helps, and um, I will see you guys 